Before we begin today, I want to take a moment to thank my patrons for their continued support of the channel. Uh, with their able assistance and uh, continued support, we should be able to upgrade the resolution here fairly quickly. So I just wanted to say thank you all very much. And uh, I want, that's it. Just want to be grateful. And uh, let's go ahead and get on with the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Oberlin Station Settlement and Survival. Today, we're going to be doing something else with this beast. Now that we've got the main huge barnacle structure there, and we've got this thing over here, this uh, living quarters hoo-ha thing, now I've got to figure out how to square off or uh, develop and close this field. What we're going to do today is I'm taking a look at the elevation, looking at how it goes around the bottom of that ridge, seeing what i got to work with, checking out the field, doing some eyeballing to see what the hell I'm going to put on the side there. And then up here, on this side, by the uh, railroad tracks, I think we're going to put a guard station like in this corner by those trees where that little ramp goes down. Like right in here somewhere, there'll probably be another guard post up here. And we'll fence it off towards the, the living quarters. But for now, we're going to square off and guard post and fortify this corner up here, the northeast, northeast corner? Yeah, the northeast corner, pointing towards Beantown and Cambridge. But again, you know, taking a look at it, looking at the terrain, seeing what I got to work with, seeing where my anchor is going to be. Because what I would what I'd like to do is put the guard station up, anchor it in, and then just wall everything off around it. Because the walls, you know, you can rug, you can rug drop those things and overlap them and whatever. But the hard object, the, uh, the firm object, I guess you could say, has to be put in here. Now, this is something I've been thinking about lately, is how to elevate the guard stations without, ele without using that one with the stairways. You know, to sort of lift the entire thing up and deal with that slope without having this gigantic monstrosity. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll try using these, uh, using the deep wall with the corner pieces as a, like a bulwark, as something to sort of give it some, give it some heft, I guess. And uh, so we're gonna do that here. And, uh, you know, edge it off, make a unit out of it, make it sort of solid, make it sort of beefy, I guess you could say. And, but still have it high enough to where, you know, they could see up over stuff. Uh, one of the problems with this game is it doesn't have, in vanilla, it doesn't have a lot of irregularly shaped pieces. Everything's squared off. There's no triangles. There's very few round pieces. There's not a lot of variable, uh, variable size things that you can use to make it, you know, extra lumpy, extra funky or whatever. I'm using a roof here because it snaps and I want to get an idea of what I'm dealing with, but I don't like the roof. Because it's it's you know uh, it's a four square. I don't want I want a one by two. Since I'm not using vanilla extensions, of course I have to do it with this thing. So I'm going to try and uh, group select this in there. Now those two raider poles you saw me drop down is that's my way of telling me telling myself okay don't build back towards this spot. This is your back limit. Don't build here because I have to make sure that I've got enough room for the eventual crops and the field and that stuff like that. So I want to make sure that I've got sufficient spacing to where people can walk around behind it and the guard can actually get up to this thing. So yeah, test fit it, it works good. And now for some reason, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, I'm thinking I want to rug drop the thing. I, I want to rug drop the uh, rug drop the guard station to get the fit, completely forgetting that of course the guard station is fairly soft and will slide in on its own fairly simply. Now I can get those two railings in there no problem, but I can't get the one on the front because it's rubbing up against that roof edge, which, well, you know, what the game thinks is a roof edge from that deep wall. So yeah, here we go. Uh, gonna try and do my, my rug drop thing with this guard station. Uh, I do realize a little bit later that you don't have to do that. I, you know, completely forgot because I'm just so used to doing this sort of thing, dropping the stuff where I want it to fit. Of course, in my defense, when you rug drop a guard station and it goes down, it tends to stick to the objects beneath it. So I needed to move the whole thing. Later, I could do that. And here I am realizing that you don't need to do that. You can just push it in there, dude. It's fine. Yeah. So I get it in there, no problem. And, but I do want to put something on the front. I don't want the guard station to be on the front like that. I want to put, uh, I want to put one of those uh, railings up there. I think I do that here. So anywho, uh, this particular this particular um, installment is to show y'all that uh, the fencing things, you know, everybody's like, oh yeah, fence it in, fence it in, fence it in. And it's, it seems like it should go pretty quick. You know, the fencing seems like it should go fast, but it takes time just like decorating, just like everything else. And I thought about not showing you this, just, you know, cutting it out because it's, you know, putting up fences. But I think that, that having it, 
you know, having the time investment shown will help when you start to do this yourself and go, man, he really put that fence up fast. Like, well, no, no, I really didn't. It took like, you know, 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it goes up relatively quick, depending, you know, given how, given how much, um, I don't know, how much visual, how much visual variety you get out of the thing. But here, right here, I'm just, like I said, I'm just uh, trying to texturize the front of this building because, you know, it's flat. It's just this big sort of wall thing. And it looks obvious that it's a wall. But when you start to uh, start to dress it up a little bit, you can sort of give it a new look, a new facing. And then, you know, go for my standards, right? Reach for my my support so I can do my rickety, my rickety thing. I can put the support underneath and then put like a walkway underneath, snap some floors to it. But scrap that settlement does not like me putting things under there. Now, of course, now since I put the since I put the guard station in and he isn't assigned to six, he decides he's going to try and get up in there because you know settlers like to get in your face when you're trying to work. And I eventually have to take the uh, I do eventually realize that he's going to keep trying until I take that thing out. So now this part here, okay, using this this roof thing, this is an idea I got from Kevin Alabear when I watched one of his videos for the local four pack challenge. Okay, he had had uh, a roof piece and he was using it as a ramp to go into his, one of his workshops. See, look at this dumb. Get out of the way, dude. Get up here, get out of the way, get out of the way, move. Yeah, forget it, I'm just gonna store it. So he had used uh, a roof piece as a ramp. And I was like, Mike, that's really, really cool because you have an angled piece that is not like a 30 degree angle, you know, for the, the one you would use for um, scaffolding, the scaffolding ramps. And it's not a 45 degree angle like the normal stairways and ladders are. And it's a nice gentle slope. And we all know that settlers can walk on these things because they end up on the roofs all the time. So did the Brahmin. So uh, I decided to try and use that, that thing. So thank you, Kevin, for this idea. <laughs> it's really, really cool. Um, and it works really good. I really like the way it works. I really like the way it looks too. Cause it's all that corrugated steel, you know. Now here I'm just trying to put it in because I don't realize quite yet that the ground is too uneven for a flat placement. But I know that the uh, the concrete pillar is too big. It won't work that way. So we're going to try and put it in with the uh, the warehouse piece to get it to go in. And it looks like it's going to go in just fine. It's going to go in just a little bit lower. You know, don't put it in exactly the same height. Leave a little bit of a a little bit of a step for them to go up because that way I can sink it mostly into the ground. And that makes it look pretty nice. That, that gives it a good, an interesting little um, profile. And then of course, now that I got the guard station out, I realize that I can get this piece in there now. So I'm gonna try to put it in, but not realizing that it's too low and the ashtray is not gonna work. So we need to raise it up a little bit so the ashtray will work. So the surface, the bottom surface is at the same height. So yeah, while we're doing this, and then I'm gonna struggle with, what am I struggle with? Oh yeah, the fence. I'm gonna, I, I have an idea to do the, See that little corner there, that little that little uh, indentation where the ramp meets the side of the house, the ramp meets the side of the underneath structure. I want to put um, I want to put a junk wall in there, and I think I'm going to do that right now. See, I see I'm seeing the corners, the little L-shaped piece there, and I'm like I need something to put in that spot. So I'm going to go and reach for a junk wall here. This doesn't work. Okay, this isn't going to work. Um, and this is a good time to segue, I suppose, into why I don't use place anywhere. You know, normally, anybody used in place anywhere who sees me doing this right now is going to go, dude, why don't you just place anywhere? You could just put the wall in there and it would just go. This is true because I'm trying to figure out if I can get that rug on the back. I need it to be on the inside of the wall, not the outside, because the inside is too close. The inside won't go into that side piece. So here's the mechanics part. <laughs> trying to figure out how much do I raise it? How much can I get it in there? Oh, a Brahmin came. So I guess I got a, I got a, I got a farmer settler. So let's put this... Uh, Put this bathtub somewhere to keep them out of the way because i still do have the beacon on and you can see the happiness still stuck at 58. it hasn't really recovered from the um it hasn't recovered from the the two settlers getting killed yet it's going to go back up it'll start climbing in a minute but i do get a fourth and a fifth person during this video and i'm just i'm struggling 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 trying to figure this out but anyway place anywhere so i'm trying to put this thing in here right and there's it will not fit on either side because of the way it's shaped and what it looks like and the fact that I can't sink anything in that spot because I've scrapped that settlement. So I try every trick I know. I try the ladders, I tried the scaffolding, I try the rug in the inside, I move it to a different spot and it just, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. 
In hindsight, as I say often, I should have given up much sooner than this. But I always think I can make something work, you know. That's and then you know that's part of the fun. That's part of the challenge. Is can I get this to go where I want it to go that way I want it to go? Do I have the ability and the tools and the techniques and what have you to get it to go? And in this case, I do not. But I have still not given up yet. I'm still thinking maybe the scaffolding will work. Maybe it's too high. Maybe it's too low. Because in this in this particular instance, I don't have. There's no indication to me what the problem is. I just know that there is a problem. And yeah, it's not going to sink, dude. It's not going to sink. I'm like, okay, so the scaffolding isn't going to work. The rug isn't going to work on the inside. Can I get the rug on the inside at a different elevation? Is that what the problem is? Uh, but yeah, it just doesn't want to work on the inside. It will not It will not let me put it on the inside. I'm thinking, is it the ground that's doing it? Maybe I need to move it and put it down here. So yeah, I did, again, think about cutting this out. But I do want to show you that when you, uh, when you have problems and you struggle with things going in, you're not alone. <laughs> you are not alone. You're not the only one who uh, has difficulty with this. And I haven't even, I'm so irritated with this right now. I'm like, I, it's got to go. I know this will work. I mean, because I've done it before. But I just can't get that thing to sit on that rug. There's no flat spot here in this thing. And I'm like, you know what? To hell with it. When am I going to give up? Am I going to give up soon? Is it going to be here? Yeah, I think it's here. Right? I put it on there and it just, it just won't go. I'm like, you know what? To hell with it. I'm done with you. So... Because I can't get it go down there, I have to think of another solution, right? Because if I had placed anywhere, obviously it would go there, it'd be fine, whatever. But I want to try something different. So now I have to do something different. And it turns out, I think, that this, this particular solution came out a little bit better. It looks a little bit more chunky this way. You know, using this particular piece here works well because it's sort of, since it's so thick on one end and thin on the other, it's sort of a triangular shape overall, which means I can get it to go like here. And that looks kind of nice. That might look a little bit better than it would have. So I need something else to cover that little la that last little gap. So I want that little angled piece that I like so much. And again, this doesn't work because the ground does not let me sink, does not let me sink hardly at all here. It just doesn't. So I try it and I try it and I get the conduit out. I'm checking it. I'm like, okay, it just won't sink there. So maybe I can get it to sink further away as long as I get some reach on it. So let's get the conduit out, put it up there. But this does not sink. It only goes in so far. It doesn't go down as far as I want it to. It only goes to there. So I'm like, you know what? It's getting dark. I'll put it there and then I'll go sleep and see if I like it. And uh, let's do the transition to daytime. I think it's going to be right here. Yeah, here it is. So we transition to daytime. I look at it. I immediately hate it. I'm like, nope, that's not going to work. Let's just take it down and put like a railing in there. I just need something to cover that gap, you know. And if I had mods, if I had my, uh, my vanilla extensions and my normal scrappy mods, that place would have been perfect for a couple of barrels or the boxes and crates. Or in hindsight, again, the, uh, the Far Harbor barrels would have been good to cover that up because they're thick, they sink, they're nice and they're ready to go. And then right around here somewhere, as I'm putting the stairs in, I think I get attacked. I'm pretty sure I get attacked. I recall being attacked. I do cut that part out, too, because it's, you know, I had to move everything, move the corpses and throw all pieces off the screen and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I got attacked here. That was kind of cool as I'm doing the stairs. But again, put the stairs in here, not quite lined up, a little bit lower. So the settler has to climb a little bit. It seems that when they have to step up, they path better. Even if, it's a, even if it's like two pixels, if they've got to climb up a little bit, it tends to work better. So we'll get the second stairway here, stick it on there. Now I could have used other ramps and stuff here, but the stairway seemed to work and they're easy for me to use. So I'm always going to reach for them first. And uh, yeah, get to the side so I can sink it better. Again, the, the terrain here is sort of iffy, so I have to, uh, I have to fiddle with it a little bit more than I'd like. But yeah, got attacked, so let's skip that part. <laughs> let's cut out five minutes of killing yet two Yalguai and harvesting their meat and moving their corpses. So now that I've got my guard station nugget up, now it's time to sort of connect it to the sides. And again, here's another, another thing that I tried that just didn't work. You know, this thing here. I really want to put this piece on the side of the lower structure so it angles up so I can put the I can put the the wall defenses closer up on higher up on the elevation, you know, higher up that ramp. But I haven't I have forgotten that those little corner pieces, the corrugated the little tin roofs on those things are really, really hard. They're hard, they're firm. 
They do not like to have anything sink into them whatsoever, period. Even with the scaffolding ladder, which I try as a dodge here, I haven't, and there's the rug, I see the rug now. I'm like, oop, gotta move the rug. Let's move that out of the way. But I try to get it in here thinking that the scaffolding is gonna make it softer, and it does not. That Those tin roofs just do not, do not play nice with anything. So, um, yeah, tip, if you wanna sink things into those little tin roofs, you gotta use a rug glitch. You, you, there's just no way that I know of to do it with this piece. Although it would look cool if I if I could have gotten that to work. I'm thinking, yeah, lower it, maybe lowering it, maybe I can get it close enough, maybe it'll be good enough. But yeah, no, as soon as it touches any pixel of the outside edge of that thing, it just goes red. It's like, no, nah, that's gonna look like crap. There's gonna be a big gap. So I pick it up to test it. Can I snap it back in? No. It's all right, time to punt. Let's go, uh, let's go grab ourselves a rug and uh, start junk walling this bad boy. So now I'm gonna do so now the process is junk wall this off. And uh, again, when you're working with elevated areas like this, you've got to use stairways, so you can see, because the elevations are just so whack. You can't see the top, you can't see the bottom. Uh, you're gonna be guessing half the time what the elevation is, so you have to look for the lowest point you can see. I'm test fitting it which way I want it, inside out or outside in. We'll do outside, we'll do inside out. So we'll do it this way, uh, put the uh, supports through the piece so it looks like they're all sort of built together. Snap it, grab the rug, yada yada. Now we need another piece here and that kind of spacing just lends itself well to that, uh, that corner piece. Because what you can do with the corner piece is you can adjust its height and depth and its spacing to where you know both sides will touch no matter how far or close it is. By just rotating it, you can change the distance to a to a certain degree. I mean, it's only gonna be so wide no matter what you do, but you can do pretty cool things by uh, shifting it around like I do here. Yeah, there we go. Take the rug out, you know, pick it up, let it go red, drop it, take the rug out, see if it drops. If it doesn't drop, excellent. So now I got my corner and I got a guard on the left on the top, I got a guard on the right. So it seems to make sense to put a turret here of some kind. And here I'm gonna put a missile turret because I've got I've got uh, machine gun turrets on the other side, and I like to know what I like to do when I'm placing turrets is when I have potential attacks coming from more than one direction, I like to put different types of turrets facing different ways. So in this case, I'm gonna put a missile turret on the north end, right? I mean, there's gonna be machine gun turrets all around, no, no, no problem there. But I'm gonna put one missile turret on the north end, and I'm gonna put a laser turret on the south end. That way, when I hear the turrets going off, if the missile turret's firing, I know the attack's on the north side, and if, the, if it's the laser turret, I know it's on the south side. So I know where to start looking for enemies. Because as we know, there's a spawn point down this hill, basically where that ladder is, right down there on the bottom of the hill. There's one to the south on the top of the ridge, and there's one to the west down behind those rocks. There's no spawn point here to the east, I don't think. I'm pretty sure there isn't. Okay, another trick here. I'm using this wall for spacing, right? Because I know that it's hard to sink the doorway, but it's easy to sink the other junk wall. So I use the doorway as a spacing, as like a measurement, as a ruler. I place it, I look where the right corner is, and then I move the left corner where the right corner is, so I know when I sink a regular junk wall, they'll overlap like this one does. So that's a little trick you can use when you're in a hurry. You can just you know take that and uh, use it as a ruler or whatever. And uh, here we're going to do the same thing I always do, which is uh, put a turret on a scaffolding behind the thing, put a half height structure in front of it, and then stick uh, sticks a, the fence railing on top to keep grenades from hitting it from the top. So, yeah, um, I guess uh, channel news, I guess we can do channel news while this is happening because we're just building turrets and walls and stuff, and we've done this stuff how many times before? <laughs> but everyone's just a little bit different. You know, it's variations on a theme. Uh, but for channel news, we're getting closer to 2,000 every day, which is flattering and perplexing in equal measure. Uh, I have not yet had the heart to load up that character. I, I don't, my memory is, I'm like, I remember how bad those were, man. I, I don't want to look at it until I absolutely have to. So in a way, I'm, I'm kind of I'm looking forward to 2K subscribers. And in a way, I'm, I'm sort of dreading it because, man, y'all are going to crack up laughing when you see these things. Oh, my God. But... But it's a good object lesson, I guess. It's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good thing. It'll say yes. Everyone started the same place. Everyone you see, all these awesome builders, they started the same way. You know, 
Maybe they did a little more learning. Maybe they did a little more uh, reviewing before they started showing people their stuff. Uh, I mean, I did. I mean, the, the character I started, the oldest videos in the channel that aren't tutorials are silent tours of the third characters built. So yeah, I didn't have the guts to show y'all the first, the first ones. I'm like, yeah, no, just no. So we had a little texture to the front because I didn't really want to have, you know, multiple layers of fencing in there. I don't like repeating textures and a junk fence works just fine. So we get our turret stand and all we need to do is just enclose the rest of it here. We've got, uh, what, probably three walls worth of space here. Use this tire wall because it's nice and thick. Adds a lot of, uh, adds a lot of extra texture. You can do different angles with it, which is nice, depending on which way you want to put it. Um, and of course, if you want to, you could put a turret on top of the center post there, on top of the stack of thick tires by just group selecting it with a conduit and uh, slotting it in there until it turns red. And it'll be perched on top of that little post in the middle, which looks kind of cool. I'm not going to do it here, obviously, because I have a turret already pointing that direction, but we'll do that. And then uh, what other channel news? Um, probably going to be doing more State of Decay coming up. Um, seems to be moderately popular. I'm enjoying the game, even though it is... Uh, even though it does have some problems. It has some problems. Um, but we won't go into that. Um, if I do cover that, I'll cover that in a related State of Decay stream. Uh, I am sort of following Draco's lead, and then I'm trying to do a 100-day challenge. Uh, I was going to stay on the same map, but I have a feeling staying on the same map is going to be like a Never Left Sanctuary kind of deal, where it's like you really can't play it very much because it's like there's nothing to do. You've looted everything. So you're just waiting for new survivors to crab at you and you're waiting for new infestations to pop up because you've cleared everything. But I do find it interesting that unlike the first game, it is possible, in fact, to stay on the same map pretty much forever, depending on which leader you pick. So, okay, so the wall's up and I think we're pretty much done. Are we going to fade? Yep. All right, so here's the tour, folks. Here is the guard enclosure and here is our wall, our outside wall. Um, it's a little low. It's not as high as the normal walls are. But since the ground slopes away past the wall, it will be sufficiently high for our purposes. And here's the sidelines from the guard. You can see the dead Yao Guai over there. But he can see this whole approach, man, all the way from the railings, all the way to, all the way to downtown, pretty much. And he can overlook the field here. There's a little patch here. We could put something there, maybe a generator or something. And then uh, we'll take a tour around the outside here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna work on that. We're gonna work on this thing at some point for sure. But we're gonna look at the elevation from the bottom, see how formidable it looks, and uh, it looks built up. It's rickety and it's you know, it's hard. It would be hard to assault this thing, for sure. Definitely hard to assault this thing. And oh, here let me run into a tree. Yeah, trademark Sardeliac. But you've got good sight lines. You've got good coverage. You've got you know you have to come up a hill to come out this place. Um, it's, not, it's got a nice irregular sort of uh, profile. And the guard station looks like it's, you know, fortified underneath. It's got some structure underneath it. The back wall, of course, still looks the same. But that's about it. So there we go. That's how, that's how long it takes to build a wall, <laughs> at least for this corner thing. So go up to the top here and we'll do our sign off. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that like button. If, you, if you're new to the channel and you want to see more, hit subscribe and there will be more. And I want to thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.